12,000 of them, as a matter of fact. And they will break the all-time record for attendances at the three tests, given that Ellen Road is already a sellout. Some ominous clouds surround Old Trafford. Guy Fawkes Day. Fireworks tonight and fireworks today. As Australia kicks off, a test that they must win. And Meninga with Eddinghausen make the first tackle. Way now for joint. And Great Britain off their own 20 metre line. Alex Murphy's words still ringing in my ears. Australia must score first. Across through Goulding it goes for big Carl Harrison. 30 years of age. Plays it just beyond the 30 metre line. Jackson runs from dummy half to be brought down. Seven metres now from the halfway point. The kick is coming back for Stedman, a new face in the side, it's a big kick down to the Australian line and now Mullen ringed, they certainly weren't 10 metres out there's the 10 metre line in front of him now the penalty and there's Annesley ruling exactly what I was talking about. Well, you've just seen a sign of how far English Rugby League has come on the kick chase game, something that was never a great priority a decade ago they now do it as well as any of the Australian sides Fortunately for them on that occasion, they were inside the 10 in the chase, but they had a lot of troops down there very quickly. Interesting that the markings, the line markings, have not been wiped out, the soccer line, and Annesley made a point of showing the Great Britain players where the rugby league 10 metre line is. It's very important. Now, Goulding involved in a punch-up with the big Australian front rower. Yeah, Dean Pate. Goulding sprinted out of the line to put a, a heavy hit on Pay. A penalty went to Australia because Goulding was never on side and he went on with it. Well, he's livid, Dean Pay. He's pointing in there. Bobby Goulding, as we pointed out, has always been a little bit of a wild character. I actually think they were put off a little bit by the line markings also. They were back behind the next line that is punctuated there you see the one on the right they were back but it's not 10 meters between those two lines now Goulding coming around but it's yes it's there I was about to say it was short here's a break we're back to Old Trafford in a moment Great Britain then on the second of this set Back at Manchester, 2-0 in favour of Great Britain. A penalty to Goulding. They're on their 20-metre line. This is their fourth play. First set of six since the kick. And Harrison plays it for Jackson, who scampers two paces before giving it to Betts. Betts. 20 of metres before tackle by Fittler. Now they come back for Goulding to kick. Wishart dropping back. He'll bring it out. Mullins will be with him. Off the 10 metre line and out of the soccer square. Wishart plays it inside the 20 and Renoff goes in for a run. And again Annersley and a penalty goes to Australia against the Englishman for holding down in the tackle. Alex Murphy on the sidelines, a comment. Well, a few questions down here about Mal Meninga being bitten, but also Lottie Daly actually got a, a smack in the eye, and he looks as though he's uh, in a little bit of pain. And uh, I hope he's not too long having that note, because uh, it's very, very important that he fires on all cylinders today. Thank you, Alex. As uh, Ian Roberts takes it ahead now. 30 metres out from the, uh, the Great Britain line. They lead 2-0. Lead the series 1-0 and they lead this 2-0 if you've just joined us. Fittler gets it down to Roberts. Roberts! Oh! Here's the captain! Meninga put down. Great tackle, Stedman. His front on defence might not be all that brilliant, but that time it was at its best. Now Daly around the back. He looks for Brad Clyde. Clyde tries to beat them with strength, but it's a penalty to Australia. Well, inside the 10 metres there. The Great Britain defence, Laurie Daly coming up quickly to take the tap. was a very good tackle from Stedman. It was fortunate that he was close up behind his front line. It didn't allow Meninga to get too much momentum up. Here he comes, strikes it, and the flags are up. Wishart levels. Great Britain restart, and Stedman's kick is deep and right down into the arms of Rod Wishart. 
And look at the tackle by Harrison. In fact, it was Powell. Clark involved as well. Clark. And of course was sickened by that nasty high tackle in the first test and we did miss Clyde that's uh, seemingly gone unnoticed in the post-mortems from Wembley Walters good run by Steve Walters he's only seven meters off the halfway line and Glenn Lazarus is uh, just getting his boot back on as Stewart keeps it low and sends it down behind Offia Stedman will bring it back though Offia not all that keen for, for extra labor Oh, gee, Malman yeah. has gone in with a short arm, and I I don't know about this. Right in front of the touch judge as well. This will be a penalty to Great Britain. Looked like a forearm as Stephen was on the ground. That's unlike Malman Inga. It's just an indication of how much is at stake here. It's a cheap shot from Mal with the left elbow. And I think what Mal's played 14, 15 years, first one I've ever seen from him. So Meninga jogs back and watches the kick of Stedman sail over his left shoulder. They take a tap and Harrison comes up. Oh, Dean Pay led the way. And there it is again, the forearm of Meninga going down on the, the head of Stedman. This is joint now. Two points all at Old Trafford. As Jackson runs away and a penalty. Again to Great Britain and this time right in front, 32 metres out. And Bobby Goulding. One out of one so far, and two out of two. Kicking shoes on. Two from two. And that all came from a penalty, really, given by Mal Meninga. Stedman takes it on the feet, and this is young Farrell, who suffered an unfortunate removal from Wembley. He had to go to get a halfback on the field. Robinson now. At Old Trafford, 4-2 Great Britain, two goals for Goulding, one for Wishart. The nine coverage of the Test Series, the second in the series. As Clark, the captain, runs into a great tackle by Clyde. Coming over the top was Lazarus. Well, was there a knock-on? No, Annesley saw it and set off the feet. And here's a pass out the back from Powell. Great work from Harrison to Offia. Then for Hunt, and Hunt is put away. Excellent defence from Eddinghausen. Saw there was danger, rushed up and got to his man quickly as Offia throws the dummy from dummy half. Oh, oh. that's got to be a penalty. Deliberately thrown forward by Offia. Oh, he's a quarterback. So they'll take the kick for line. Almost surely, 48 metres out, and there's the incident. Deliberately forward from Offia. Poor old Lee Jackson said, why me? Eddinghausen. Just... Uh, Wiping. He'd be wiping a bit of grease off. He came in uh, and tackled one of the Great Britain players who had grease all over his knees. Just getting rid of that now before he gets back into the action. That ground out there is quite greasy. The players, of course, uh, wearing a lot of grease, the Great Britain team, but the ground in itself dampened by overnight rain as Eddinghausen comes off his wing, works with Stewart, then for Daly, now for Fittler, and then for Renoff. Renoff looks for an opening, and he's pulled down this defence. Is good from Great Britain. That tackle was made by Connolly. And now it misfires, but Stewart is able to clean it up and tries to burrow through. 31 metres out, touched in play. Six more for the Aussies. And with Roberts, it goes across for play. Here's a chance. They've got the numbers. They come across in sliding defence. Mullins gets it back. Maminga on for Eddinghausen. Eddinghausen for the corner. Pull down. Offier and Stedman make the tackle, but Great Britain are on their heels at the moment. It's with Ricky Stewart, across for Brad Fittler. He tries to step, stands, offloads, picked up by Dean Pay. Pay's at the 10-metre line. Now Lazarus, Lazarus, he comes back, looks for Mullins. Mullins runs decoy, and it's a Shepherd. Penalty, Great Britain. Well, Australia came so close there, mounting an attack there, and in the end, Lazarus held the ball up just for one second too long. And the shepherd came. Here it comes here. Maybe he should have given it the first time there. They might have been forward, but there was the shepherd. Yeah, an excellent oh. kick there from Great Britain, finding touch on the halfway line. Harrison met by Daly and put away. The first sustained attack in the game, weathered by Great Britain. 
So here they are now. Just inside the 30-meter line, Lee Jackson. Very good dummy half runner. Clark, a dummy half. Daly at first marker. They go to the right to Goulding. A test for Australia now in defense. And Goulding, 25 out, center of the ground. Jackson, a dummy half. Great Britain stacking up a play. They're working for the play. Not this one, but probably the next, as Betts is tackled just inside the 20-meter line. There's Stedman looking for the ball, but it goes to Goulding on the blind. A little kick in behind the line, looks too strong. And uh, the Australians, oh gee, just nonchalantly watching it. Wishart and Mullins, they had a better view than we did. Our hearts went into our mouths, but uh, it's okay. We come back to the 20-meter line now for the restart, and uh, it's Brad Fittler coming across and putting the step on. Okay joint it is that brings him down Maninga a dummy half and there's one question that has definitely been answered in the opening stages of this first, uh, second test as Meninga burst through a tackle there was some doubt about the fitness of Bradley Clyde after the knock he took at Wembley he has been outstanding out here early good ball to Stewart there's a chance there is a chance as Rinoff finds a bit of open space and it's closed by Clark great defense by the loose forward 40 meters out Walters away now to a wide blind he straightens up and goes up the center oh Steve Walters hammered by Jackson they're just outside the 20-meter 20, uh, 20 line now. And they come, well, Renoff, Jackson keeps getting offside from Marker. Renoff is tackled 15 out. This is the last. Dummy half is Lazarus. It's a cross now for Stewart. Stewart decides, let's test them. And the ball goes over towards Connolly. Oh, Wishout got a great, uh, a great deflection, but Pay couldn't handle it. And the referee is ordering a turnover. Still, there's some scuffling in there. Wishart came up with almost clean ball and then tried to bat the ball down to play. The penalty goes now to Great Britain. So they've come off their own line twice in the last five minutes through the courtesy of Australian penalties. And here they are now with some very good line kicking. Harrison, who got off the, uh, the straight track and went on a bit of an angle. Harrison, Goulding now. This is Farrell, 19 years of age, youngest player in the match. Youngest forward ever to represent Great Britain. Now Betts, up the centre. Oh, throws a pass willy-nilly, and uh, Ripley Hensley has ruled and knocked on. We've got a bad injury here to Ian Roberts. Straight away, Laurie Daly signalled to the bench. Very badly cut, I think, up around the eye area. He went in low on Dennis Betts who may have even caught him with a boot as he was falling totally accidental well the doctor is there immediately Nathan Gibbs Brian Hollis realized exactly what had gone wrong and he's oh, oh he's, yeah. he's trodden on his head and he will go into lock play into the front row Loromo makes his test debut. Daly on a runaround mission with Meninga and great defence by Great Britain. Their defence is great, Ray. They're just reading everything Australia are doing and it's, it's fantastic. And they're hitting hard, just like that. This is Loromo now, 31 metres out from his own line. Wishart tries to catch the markers out. He succeeded in doing that and there's a Great Britain player gone down injured. Lee Jackson. Played by Wishart, back and away for Fittler to take it up, and they go to the halfway line with Meninga. He puts on a fend. It didn't work for him. Hunter's there around the legs to make the tackle, the St. Helens centre. And Walters now goes back open side for Stewart to give on for Clyde. And he puts on the ground with the grubbing kick. Stedman goes across, and he'll have to bring it out of the corner, so they're not going to make too much headway, I wouldn't think. Renoff and Wishart make the tackle, and there's a groan from the Great Britain supporters about the high tackle from Wishart. Robinson almost gets away. Desperate tackle by Lazarus. 21 minutes gone in the match, and uh, it's Goulding giving it on for Betts. And Dennis Betts is tackled by Fittler and Stewart. Robinson, fine young prospect, making a good run. This is joint. Front row forward, a second row by profession, but pushed up into the front row by Ellery Hanley. I think another enormous improvement in the Great Britain side is the mobility of their forwards. Now, they've always been skillful, but with the likes of, of Clark, Young Farrell, Chris Joint, they're very, very quick along the ground and get off the ground quickly as well as 
Mullins beats two tackles. Uh, good run by Brett Mullins. He took that ball back on his own line. He was tackled 30 metres out. It's gone to Clyde quickly. Now to Florimo. Florimo's had an outstanding tour. Playing in the minor games, he's been one of our better players. As Eddinghausen gives a short ball for Pay. Pay goes up the centre. Runs straight into Harrison right on the halfway line. Stewart waving players away to the right as he comes across and uh, Fittler goes back angling in amongst the forwards. Four points to two then. Two penalty goals to Bobby Goulding. And we've had a quarter of the match go. A bit, a bit more than that actually. About 22 minutes gone. As Clyde goes up the centre again and Big Harrison is there waiting. Blocking up the centre. Now Stewart shaping the kick. Holding it up. Running to the line. Meninga's pass goes behind Eddinghausen. Turnover of possession. Well... That's more Andrew Eddinghausen's problem than Mal Meninga's. The winger is the man that should position himself favourably, and the best place the best place for that is a couple of metres behind the man inside you. And the, the Great Britain player that was down injured gets some attention. It is Martin Offia. They're on the halfway line as Jackson goes across. He's OK now. Bets it is that uh, steps off the right foot, runs into Fittler. Fittler is doing an enormous amount of work. Walters and Pay making the tackle with him and then from Jackson on to Goulding and across for Powell. They come back in, Clark. And he's pulled down over the top by Clyde underneath by Lazarus. Now, Harrison gets in the queue and puts his hand up and takes it to the 30-meter line. Picks up Jackson! Jackson to the 20! Picked up by Brad Clyde! And he's smothered away by Stedman. Oh, isn't he a good player, Lee Jackson? He had a great game in the first test and he's going just as well on this test. He's dangerous every time he runs to the football. Warramo now. Roberts, nasty injury. We'll get some more details on that as soon as we can. Renoff is 30 metres out. And look at Jackson. I can't believe that Annesley hasn't pinched him more than once in two matches. And he remains in front of the play of the ball until it's cleared the ruck. I would sincerely doubt it. Meninga got an awful pass. Eddinghausen and Offia. Eddinghausen held on the halfway mark by Goulding and by Offia over the top. Five gone. So Stewart now running to the blind side. Keeps it low. Gets it in behind Offia. That's a beautiful kick by Stewart. Finds the line for the mandatory 10-metre scrum on the Great Britain end of the ground. They lead by four to two. This is the kick Ricky Stewart and with uh, precise accuracy. Alex, uh, have you a report on Ian Roberts? Well, they're saying down here that it's a very, very bad gush indeed. Uh, three, four inches, and they're talking maybe 15, 16 stitches right across his eye. It's in, he's in a very, very bad state. Goulding working the scrum and across for Powell. And the Powell from, from Sheffield, first representative player that club has, uh, has provided. Clark across the ground then the pass to ground and Renoff's tackle on Clark was very strong and Robinson is held down on the 20 metre line held by Clyde and very lucky the Australians that that pass didn't find us Marcus Florimo comes in high on Connolly there was a real chance there Renoff came flying in left an overlap I think Hanley knows that that was a chance Farrell picked up and put away by Dean Pay. certainly not phased by the occasion Dean Pay. Now Powell across, looking for the short ball and giving it to Betts, and Betts wishes to God he hadn't. Meninga hammered him into the ground, and Betts loses the ball. No, it was taken off him, said the referee. The penalty goes to the home side. And again, I think Annesley has got it right. It was a big tackle from Mal Meninga, and he did just give the tackle Great Britain player a little bit of a push that wasn't needed. Dennis Betts it was. There he goes in. No need to go over the top again like that. Here's Harrison, thumped into the ground by Fittler, Daly and Walters. They're just outside the 20-metre line. Some of the Australian forwards looking a little bit tired, so this is going to be a period of the game of great importance. Away to Goulding and across and a high ball for Stedman. Inside comes Hunt. Hunt eventually shut down by Clyde. Florimo was underneath. Jackson goes from dummy half again. His dummy half running is excellent. Providing Australia with a lot of worries, Lee Jackson. He fishes for a penalty there. He doesn't get it. Gilding across, intercepted by Meninga. The 
big blokes away. Off he is after him. Eddinghausen's coming in support. Meninga, he's running out of legs. He finds Eddinghausen. He scores. Andrew gets his 10th try of the tour. Big Mel Meninga gets the intercept. And Andrew Eddinghausen scores. Oh, the big legs, they were getting weary. You look for Offia, he was flying and there was plenty of support coming. The intercept taken from Bobby Goulding was going across to try and pick up some outside support. And there's the intercept, fingertip control from Mal. 10 metre start on Offia and ET is off in pursuit as well. He did everything right, Meninga. You didn't think that he knew Offia was there, but there was no doubt as soon as Offia arrived, the timing of the pass was superb. Watch the way ET gets down low. From the touchline, looking for 100 points for the tour, it's wide, but Australia leads by six points to four. Five tries on tour now for Brett Mullins. We came away with high expectations for him. And he really deserved that try because he was the one that made the biggest impact. Wishart, he converts. Australia leading now by 18 points to four. Constitution coming on for Great Britain. Let's take it from Alex Murphy. Well, this is a, a big occasion for Gary Schofield. Left out for the first test, but brought back for the second. What an important game he now has. But it makes you wonder what Australia are doing when they score a try. They now look eager for the ball. All the three quarters look as though they need it, and the forwards are playing out of this world. Gary Schofield coming into the match will make him just one short of the most tests played for Great Britain. Mick Sullivan with 46 holds that for them and Gary goes into this match his 45th test. He's not on as yet, but he is about to come into the game. I'm told from the sideline, the, the huddles here. Here's a penalty going to Australia. Frustration coming out of Alan Hunt. is underneath us and uh, you can't see anything through the naked eye you rely totally on the cameras as uh, the penalty has been taken the tap will be taken on the halfway line this is Dean Pay 42 meters out from the Great Britain line Australia leading by 18 points to four and here's Daly taken by Powell nothing certain in this game and big margins have been whittled away but just looking at what Australia is doing today, it is going to be a big, a big task for Great Britain to come out of this one. Florimo into the match with Ian Roberts off with a nasty head wound. As Walters serves it up, they get a bit of depth in their attack as Pay takes it ahead. Now this will be the play that they're setting for. Daly and Meninga are very deep and Fittler is out on the back line outside Stewart. Stewart is with it now. He cuts out Fittler, goes to Daly. Now for Meninga. Then it's across for Renoff. And Renoff is tackled 18 metres out. That's the turnover. 18 points to four. And 40 minutes of, uh, of time have elapsed. So it's uh, the time-off period that we're now watching. Off here across the ground. He beats two. Now they straighten with Connolly. And he's hit by Clyde. 16th test for Gary Connolly. Never scored a try. Off here. Across now for Robinson to chime in. Scored a great try against the Australians at, at, uh, at Wigan. He can do it from anywhere, Jason Robinson. He plays it back on his 30-meter line. It's with Goulding and across now for Farrell. And Farrell's got bets on his outside, but Daly is around his midriff. A few metres from the halfway line. We're pretty close to half-time. It's a very important part of the game, uh, obviously, for both sides, but it's uh, it's not a time to relax. I thought they'd be looking for the little chip over the top here. They know that a try now would get them back in it before half-time. Bobby Goulding now running around in circles. That's the quality of the defence of the Australians. So, too, Hunt. And this well, is the last. was so confident about his pace, he actually was chasing Goulding. They play the ball on the halfway line. Betts now sees plenty of pasture. Now Lee Jackson is in front of the kicker and he goes up and handballs the ball down. And referee Annesley, I feel, has played the advantage as Stewart comes up with it. There's the halftime siren. He's now out there for this second half. High hopes for New Love during this series. And we'll see what kind of player he is in the next 40 minutes. So Florimo it is, tackled for Australia on his own 20-metre line. Some interesting statistics coming out of the first half. 
which we'll deal with as this match starts to unfold in the second half. Brad Clyde is tackled on his 30-meter line as Walters offloads and Pay takes the third tackle on the first set of six in the second half to the 40-meter line. Walters, Walters with a good dummy half run. In fact, on four tackles, there's the ball coming loose and Meninga is with it. Now Great Britain are with it. And that is New Love. He's just going a little bit further with the changes. New Love goes into the centres for Alan Hunt and Schofield goes to 5'8 for Darrell Powell as Offia can't find support. Lee Jackson racing to get there now. There's a big line for Great Britain to the right. And that's where they're coming through Goulding and now through Schofield and then a nice pass out to Farrell. The pass has gone straight. Renoff is onto it but Robinson beats him to the punch. Robinson tackled just on the Australian side of the halfway. 18-4 to four then. Early seconds of second half and good morning to you in Australia if you're watching the test and I know that many of you are record figures for the first as it goes from Schofield across for Goulding and then the runner out that creates the extra man New Love pulled down by Mal Meninga oh, great tackle from Meninga it looked like New Love had him for pace outside but held on Goulding goes high this is a pretty fair kick Eddinghausen difficult catch makes it look easy did he what he provided himself with a lot of time and Florimo works out from the 20-metre line. He's had an impact in his in his debut test. Greg Florimo, Paul. Yes, and, and he's just uh, he's had a great tour, as we've said many, many times. As Renoff now looks to make ground. He's he's going, and look at him go. Renoff is inside the 30-metre line. Walters quickly up to dummy half, but the play of the ball has been slowed down. Stewart is with it. And now Daly, this is Meninga, the Canberra connection to the 20-metre line. Darkening at Manchester as uh, Stewart goes around the back to pick up Dean Pay and Pay, he can pop a ball, he does. Florimo gives it air and Rinoff oh. makes a diving catch to keep it alive. What a catch. That was brave. Now to the right. Daly, Daly sees pasture, goes through it. Daly, go Laurie, yes he's in. Laurie Daly scores. That will do him the world of good. He made his debut here, he wasn't happy in 1990 with what he did. And he scores a try through lazy Great Britain defence. Well, I backed him to score the first try, but he's got the fourth. And a simple one, they've, they've taken over early in this second half where they left off. The step was too good. No chance, Carl Harrison. A yawning gap there, and Laurie Daly... Thank you very much. What about oh. Big Carl? I thought he was genuflecting to him as he went through. Well, he saw pasture, and then he said to Harrison, I'm going straight past you, and Daly over near the sticks. Great try to Laurie Daly. Second try on tour only for Laurie Daly. Wearing his 17th Australian cap today, and Wishart, he converts. Left-footed kick. And look at this man, Lazarus, running better than I've seen him for ages. is high on Clyde Harrison. he must be wearing a sign on his face hit me here because every time Brad comes to uh, to England he gets a smack over the mouth well Annesley was calling out Lee Jackson the actual fact it's higher Harrison who went high on Clyde Wooshka caution on the run there and uh, so in Australia now now being an attacking position inside the Great Britain half they could smash him now well, it'll be going it'll be interesting the rest of this game because it's important that great britain go into the third test match with something out of this game australia of course looking to really dominate and that's very very close to send off material one from harrison please they've got to come back great britain. please don't write them off yet i'm certainly not going to say it because i'm the biggest hex of all this is fitler now 30 meters out and he shovels the ball down for walters and steve walters even though he's got that suspect left knee he's He's matched it run for run with Lee Jackson. Now they run decoys and go up the centre with Pay. Gets it across for Florimo. Florimo does a bit of dancing with Dennis Betts. And the Florimo has tackled 20 metres out from the line. 24 to 4 then, Australia in front. They're in command of the Old Trafford Test. Daly, a short pass. Fiddler, Fiddler inside for Renoff. Renoff's on his way and he falls over. Gets a pass away. Daly, Daly's two metres out from the line. Australia looking to shut it right down. The ball comes out. It's a scrum. Well, what odds was Steve Brinoff when he got through that gap? He was fanning him 40 to 1 on. And he slipped. Well, I do think if it had if gone for the outside as well, he still would have scored. He, 
he looked to change direction a couple of times although Connolly was, was making good progress great ball and Jackson got Daly very close scrum win to Great Britain and Robinson now taken 20 metres out 15 metres out Robinson with no markers and uh, he can prove potent from anywhere as I mentioned earlier Jason Robinson 20 years of age the Wigan wing three-quarter they go to the right uh, to the left and Schofield unloads for Farrell Farrell is there to be tackled by Daly and Meninga 24 to 4 then Daly a try since the break and Wishart converted and it's now with Schofield he keeps it low off the right foot and down inside the 20 meter line seven minutes of the second half gone Mullins who scored a try comes back and tries to break through they shut down the defense off here involved on one of the few occasions that he has been and now Stewart runs across there's a gap out wide Stewart's trying to promote it for Wishart and then Stewart takes the hammering of Car of Carl Harrison 28 out from the Australian line they work the blind side Dean Pay runs at them and I've got a funny feeling we're looking at a fellow that's going to be in these colors for quite some time to come Stewart gives it away for Lazarus Lazarus pulled down by Betts Super game by the uh, by the Bronco front row forward. Walters out from dummy half now. Joint missed him. Harrison got him. Florimo's calling for a quick play of the ball. Five uh, tackles are gone. And Stewart uses it through the hands. Daly is with it. They've got numbers. They've got two on one. Meninga comes back on the inside. Then gets a pass away. Handballed away by Eddinghouse. And Daly goes to the air. The chase is on. Coming through is Florimo. Florimo goes for it. Gets a touch to it, but it goes forward. And Stedman comes away for Great Britain. And a great tackle by Bradley Clyde. Inside their 20 metre line. Lafia comes in. Runs back and shovels the ball out there for Robinson. He's kidding Martin Offia. He just will not have a go, will not take the line on. He runs across the field 20 metres and tries to find somewhere to pass it to. Schofield's kick is a shock out. Wishart hurries back. Robinson's in pursuit, but he's 20 metres away. Wishart now back on his own. He can't afford to lose the ball here. Clyde is back, as you might expect. He always is. Schofield tried to shut the ball down. Daly away for Mullins. Mullins runs hard and fast at the gap. 15 is getting ready to come on for Great Britain. It is Barry McDermott. He's listed as 17. He'll come on in 15 as Australia gets the penalty. Meninga talking to Daly, just saying to Laurie, just, just slow it down. I guess that's what he's saying. As McDermott waits in the wings. One of the new boys at Wigan, Barry McDermott. A fine player. It might be that it is Harrison who'll come off, although it might even be his, his front row partner, but I think that might have been the message to Harrison, you're coming off. Are they looking for a blood bin? Yes, they are. They've asked uh, the referee for a blood bin. That has been granted by Graham Annesley, so Harrison will come off. And McDermott, a 22-year-old, will go on. The second test a big roar from the crowd McDermott who got time for a shot on Paul Siren in the Central Park so Australia now taking the tap and Dean Pay with the head down and the legs driving like pistons has tackled 25 out from the Great Britain line they hold down in the tackle I thought Annesley might have given the penalty here's Clyde from the back Great tackle by Chris Joint, and it's on in there. The test is blowing up again. Well, Bradley Clyde got smashed again. I think you'll find it was Barry McDermott coming over the top in his first involvement in the game. Annesley didn't like this. He, someone might go here. Well, at the end of the day, well, you could knock for that, but he, he was quick to react to give a penalty. And Steve Wallace came in there. Well, it was the head-eye tackle on the way through. At the end of the day, I was about, oh, Steve Walters gives him a bang over the ear with an open hand. But I just, I'm worried about Bradley Clyde. I hope I'm worrying unnecessarily, but he has taken so many high shots. Uh, there must be some concern about the lad because a knock 
so quickly after being heavily concussed can be very damaging. Well, they're lining up here to get... I mean, Steve Wallace had a go. Then Dean Pay came There's in. the sin bin now. Dean Pay had a crack in him as well. They were queuing up to get to McDermott, but they'll have to wait another 10 minutes. Yeah, Walters has gone as well for 10. Been kicking beautifully. This one he hits badly, but he gets the two points. 26 to 4 then. Getting the ball just outside the 20 metre line. The, the number 14 jumper is Alan Langer, who is on. Well, that's right, Steve Wallace in the sin bin. They need a hooker and dummy half out there. That's why Langer has gone on. Unfortunately, as Bittler goes up the middle, it's uh, Greg Florimo has had a big game. He's the man who's been replaced. There he is there. I'll be very proud of his efforts today. Langer across into the hands of Stewart. Stewart lobbing it down into the end goal but it's a very narrow end goal and Stewart's not happy with his kick and that little experiment of Bob Fulton's as a concerned Ellery Hanley talks to his assistant coach Hetherington but um, that little shuffle of the half backs into Hooker and Dummy half for 40 minutes each back I'm not sure where it was I think Castleford that will come into its own now because Alan Langer is in there just for a while now it's across through Goulding to, to Dennis Betts, and Betts just getting away from Clyde's tackle, which was secured over the top by Alfie Langer. Now Schofield outside the 40. Farrell runs strong and hard. Gets it inside. Schofield's there. Kicks ahead for Connolly. Wishart has to turn. Connolly and Wishart. Connolly, he's over. It's a try. No. He's disallowed it. Well, I think you'll find the touch judge has actually ruled against the try, saying that Gary Connolly was in touch before getting the ball down. Beautiful work on the short side. Great pass from Gary Schofield to Farrell. Looked across to see where the speed men were and he saw they were on the outside. And this should show it up perfectly. Wishart claims Connolly. There it is. He's ah, in touch. Is. Yeah, he was spot on the touch, Judge. This is... Second or third tackle now on the new set of six as Australia bring it out quickly towards halfway. And Meninga is tackled there. Well, Gary Connolly's not meant to score a try. This is his 16th test. He still hasn't scored one. As Stewart reverses it. Clyde goes up the centre, runs into the waiting clutches of Dennis Betts. Clark coming over the top. Langer a dummy half. Stewart gives him the call with Stewart. Now Daly. Daly steps off the left foot, runs at the gap and is pulled out on the 40 metre line by Farrell will come on come on Schofield's off for the line but he's he's been called back and Annesley's quite right and I've got to say to you that how many times the front marker gets out of the line before the ball is clear of the ruck is incredible Schofield wasn't even front marker he was second marker standing shoulder to shoulder and the crowd booed Annesley how could you boo him Come on. Australia. 26 to 4. 18 gone. The kick is coming around ever so gently and wide. We've got it dead, so it'll come back to the Australians with the 20 metre dropout. Ball bouncing up on the first bounce for, for Brad Fittler to come away. And that big step off the left foot and then he's got his arms free looking to unload they're looking for each other today they're talking today the australians and brad clyde he's been there for longer than he was at wembley and the great britain side know it and lazarus what a performance by him today langer a dummy half walters in the sin bin so is mcdermott through to Stewart and on for Daly. Meninga's out there, Mullins comes in, and Mullins takes the ball. It was rather fortuitous for Australia, but it was play on as he now plays the ball back to Langer on the halfway. Fittler pushes, pushes across to the extra men on the left of the ground, play for Renoff. Renoff running straight into Jackson. Now they're 40 metres away on tackle number five. Well, Langer caught the second marker, and he got the pass away. Stewart runs across on an angle. Eddinghausen is there. Meninga's on his inside. He's centre kicks. Alfie Langer's going through after it. And so is Meninga. Oh, Stedman. Stedman hammered by Langer and Meninga. Oh, outstanding take from Graham Stedman. It was little and large coming at him. Mal and Alfie. 
And here's a penalty for exactly the same infringement as Schofield was pulled up for. The marker's not in line. Stedman gets play underway very quickly. It's been a feature of their game today, their line kicking. As Cassidy comes on. Debut at Wembley. Another penalty goes to Great Britain. Farrell finds the line this time. Now, they are in the go zone, if you like. Through Goulding for Schofield. They cut out the captain. They find Betts out wide. Betts, he's up to the 20. That's a forward pass, I thought. Clark joins in. Now Robinson. Robinson beats Mullins. But he's taken there by Dean Pay. Ten metres out from the line. Stewart. Is back in the line. He wasn't there for the last uh, the last two tackles. Gilding across. Then Schofield. Now it's out wide. That's New Love. This is Stedman. And out wide. They get the pass back in field. Picked up by Jackson. Jackson. He gets the ball out the back. Picked up by New Love again. It's Connolly, is it? Now it's New Love. He'll score. New Love is over. Well, talk about ball promotion. The Lions were brilliant. Yeah, great football by Great Britain there. The man who has started to really put them on the map is Gary Schofield with his long passing game. He's getting players running into the gaps and uh, he's having a, a great second half and uh, just not enough Australian defence to combat what Great Britain had. Some loose ball finally picked up. New love it was there. He beat, uh, beat someone here. He beats E.T. Slippery the ground and then beat three more. Lazaro got him, but all too late. Well, I think uh, Newlove's obviously a great player, but what about Gary Schofield? He's making the difference, if there is a difference, uh, for Great Britain. He's moving the ball out wide, and uh, obviously with people like the lad who just scored the try, it's very, very important that Newlove gets on the end of those long balls. There's the kick by Bobby Goulding. It's offline. 26 to 8, then Australia over Great Britain. We'll be back at Old Trafford in a moment. Richard floating it down high, and Stedman uses young... Farrell, Andrew Farrell to bring it back. And welcome back to Manchester, the second test of the 18th Kangaroo Tour of Great Britain. Robinson tackle. Now Langer has gone back off. And uh, Steve Walters is back in the action for Australia, which would mean that McDermott also is back on the field for Great Britain, both players coming out of the sin bin. And here they are making the ball do the work. They have got nothing to lose now. And Betts makes a break. Connolly is with him on the outside. Support on the inside. Betts, he passes to Connolly. Wishart's got him and puts him away nine metres out from the line. Well, England are starting to come back. Across they go wide with the big ball for Stedman. Then the pass is knocked on by New Love. The hero becomes the villain. A oh, great break made by Dennis Betts through some flimsy defence. If the Australians think that this game is home and hosed, they'll have to start thinking again. The cutout pass was a good one from both Schofield and Stedman. New Love had two goes at it. Couldn't come up with the take. Dennis Betts limping off now. New Love has been involved. The thing that impressed me about when he, when he scored the try, he had to get up off the ground to put himself in a position to score, and that's exactly what he did. Now, that is McDermott coming back now. That just uh, that, that puzzles me because I thought he would have come back simultaneously with Walters. They went off at the same time unless, unless the Australian watch is running slower. <laughs> Australia. Australia now with Daly making a half break and 25 out from his own line. Betts has left the field. Florimo is back on, Meninga goes up the centre, dragging players with him. Walters gets in, looks for a quick play, the ball from his captain. And Brad Clyde, realising that they need some good settling forward runs, reaches the halfway line. That would be their fourth tackle, and they're making the halfway mark on four tackles. As Dean Play gets the pass away, Renoff sees an opening, tries to go through it. He looks on the inside for Wishart, and they come in and they cannon him off into the ground. Bits back on the bench. And Australia now, just outside the 20-metre line. Stewart fires a pass that must have gone 20 metres. It's with Daly who loses his footing. And that's tackle number five. Great Britain putting their line together as Stewart kicks on the reverse for Mullins. Mullins might get the bounce. No, Cassidy did. And Cassidy makes a run for Great Britain. 
driven into the ground, loses the ball. Lazarus made the tackle. The ball comes loose and Australia have got it. They play it outside the 20-metre line. Stewart is giving it now. Daly, oh, Connolly took Daly, but there's a try coming. Frolimo inside, Renoff. Renoff goes in to score. Renoff gets the try for Australia. No tripping over for Steve Renoff this time. Laurie Daly knew that the outside men from Great Britain were coming in very quickly, so he just batted the ball on. Greg Florimo kept his cool, got into open spaces. Renoff came back on the inside, knew there was no support coming across. And that's what set the try. I don't know whether he batted it on or missed it completely, Laurie, but it worked out well for the Aussies. As Greg Florimo, who's played great, was taken by Schofield and Steve Renoff, a simple task to catch the ball and go back inside. Renoff, one of the reasons for this improvement today. Wishart, ah, oh, straight as a dart. Beautiful kick. Kick off. Returned by Mal Meninga. Australia turning the 8-4 loss at Wembley into a, a massive defeat on Great Britain here at Old Trafford. And Old Trafford again proves a bogey man as Fittler punches the Great Britain defence. Kicks ahead for Daly. Stedman's after it. Daly looks for his second try. He won't make it. Daly grabbing at that right knee. McDermott away from the 20 meter line. Jackson pushes it on. Off are you looking for somebody else? 25 out from his line. Daly still down behind the Great Britain in the dead ball line so he's in a, all sorts of trouble probably for something he didn't have to do he was never going to reach the football so australia may lose a player through uh, that injury daly gave him the impression he looked back at something in the ground or on the ground now they're on the halfway line that was the fourth tackle as they come across through building for Schofield and then out wide Cassidy tried to get the pass away it came off in Australia and then off the feet of Robinson and as we said six more and that's the right ruling as Robinson has tackled 31 meters out from the Australian line 32 points to eight then I'm looking at the watch about 11 minutes of time remaining Clark will play it now and a knock-on is offered by Jackson his first real blemish in two test matches that we've seen him in. And Daly, he seemed okay up until that point, but there was something just in that last little roll down the hill that got him on that right knee. Well, he really put some pressure on that knee, didn't he? He's glimping back uh, into line now. Alex, what's your theory on that injury to Daly? Well, what they're saying down here is it could be one of the sprinkler heads uh, just over the dead ball line. Meninga inside for Mullins. Alex, I'll come back to you. I said it once before they won't catch him, but that was Matt Sears. There's no Matt Sears today, and Mullins gets his second try. Well, it's all too easy now. Some very simple defensive errors from this Great Britain team. And Mullins gets his second for the match. Laurie Daly, he'd only just come back on side. He was out playing on the wing. A nice little change. Mal Meninga, who's been very, very strong today, got a great ball back inside. Not the speed from McDermott, nor Farrell. And what about the stride? It's about 12 feet. Sixth try of the tour for Brett Mullins. Mal Meninga's had a fantastic game today, the Australian captain. Went a bit ordinary at Wembley, but he's made up for that today with a... Just a brilliant game, great captain's game. That's the more important aspect that was lacking at Wembley. There were two things that I wanted the Great Britain audiences to see. Wishart right in front. He's had a good test match, Wishart. He won the spot over Wendell Saylor. The Farrell taken by Siriman. They go across, they roll the ball into the end goal. Not quite. And there to clean it up as the fullback for Australia, Brett Mullins. A scorer of two tries and about three minutes on the clock. 38 to 8 Australia. Lazarus almost out to the 10 metre point. 
Well, been, a, been a great win for Australia, and I think probably a bloke who deserves a, a bit of a rap is the coach, Bob Fulton. He knew after the first test that changes were needed, and he was prepared to make them after sifting through the form of the last couple of weeks. He has come up with a top combination. Certainly the changes have been justified, Fatty. Glenn Lazarus, I think tour football really does suit him. The more football that he plays, the better he gets. Well, to be fair to Lazarus, he didn't have a lot of football following the Melbourne cricket ground. Short passing, sees Serenan. He hears the goal from Fiddler. Fiddler is down to the 40-metre line, swivels away. Renov tries to step, gets the pass away. Eddinghausen, Eddinghausen, over the 20, runs into Wishart, pushes him away as well, and he's put on an obstruction. Oh, he's pushing them all away. He's beaten <laughs> 20 of them and one of ours, but it's cost them a penalty. Great run by E.T. If Wishart isn't there, he probably scores a try. He might have beaten Robinson. Well, does that go down for a missed tackle for Wishart? <laughs> a Great Britain come back. A couple of minutes left in the game. McDermott loses it. And it's been raked out, so it's a penalty to the home side. I was going to make the point about Lazarus that after that crippling injury at the Melbourne Cricket Ground, he, he scarcely saw much football. And if you remember, Wayne Bennett didn't have him in the run-on side for the Broncos. So he, he, he didn't have much of a chance to get fit. And then he tore the, 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 the groin muscle in the match against Cumbria. So obviously, he's going to get better with, uh, with match play. Schofield out wide for Farrell. And Farrell has been lurking out there the greater part of the second half. Clark using Connolly as a, a decoy. He went back looking up the centre for Robinson. Now Connolly rolls it in, but it's over the dead ball line. It's far too deep there. Fielding one of the ball going back to the blind side. The official man of the match has just been announced. It's gone to Bradley Fittler. He's had a fine game, Fittler. For mine, I couldn't separate Dean Pay or Bradley Clyde. Oh, you could throw in Lazarus as well. I mean, Meninga's just a shandy off it as well. It's been a great team performance. Lazarus now out to the 30-metre line. Annesley is going to put a scrum down, ruling that there was a knock on Bob Fulton with uh, Sean McRae and smiles all around. You couldn't, uh, you couldn't find a smile after Wembley, but they're satisfied with what they've done, aren't they? He's been under a lot of flack, Bob Fulton, but he's handled that, handled it, and served up a 13 that has been by far and away the better side. Hillary Hanley on the other side of the coin has got problems. It'll be interesting to see how he handles his first big problem as the number one man in, uh, in British football. Lazarus ran a decoy and Sirenan followed and then Walters able to get a pass away and Bradley Clyde up the centre and pulled down 28 metres up. With the scoreboard showing 38 to 8. Here they are again across looking for Renoff. Renoff has been very alert today, very involved. Stewart's pass to Mullins. Mullins wishes he hadn't have passed it. Harrison creams him over the top. And the last tackle is with us. So Stewart's a dummy half. A cross for Fittler, who goes for the drop goal, and uh, Annesley says why. 38 to 8, no change. And six tries in the match, two by Brett Mullins. <laughs> he's just walked past Ricky Stewart, Brad Fittler, and said, that was all right, wasn't it? I don't think he's going to get too many arguments. Eddinghausen, Clyde, Daly. Renoff, all scoring tries, Mullins two, in a total of six tries by the Australians. Great Britain have now been to Old Trafford four times, and four times they've suffered defeat. They might take it off their calendar when, uh, when future tours are here. I don't think so. It's a magnificent ground. And uh, I... Uh, Oh, that's forward a mile. Absolutely forward a mile. It doesn't matter. There is the siren. Australia has kept the Test Series alive. And how?
38 points to eight with six tries and it's jubilation all round the official man of the match was brad fitler